All right, so now we have operations on functions. So if we have two functions f and g, then for all values of x for which both these two functions exist, then the following four things are true. So for example, this first, this first one here says we have f plus g of x is equal to f of x plus g of x. Really what this means is if you have two functions, you can add two functions together and get this new function called f plus g. Please make note, this is not multiplication that's going on right here. This is not f plus g times x. Uh, even though it looks like we're using, using the distributive property, it's not really the distributive property that's happening. Okay, because this is function notation, f plus g is the name of the function, x is the independent variable that we're using, and uh, this just f plus g of x is just defined to be, take the f of x function and add it to the g of x function. Same idea with uh, f minus g of x. That goes to f of x minus g of x. Yes, it matters which function's first and which function is second because of the subtraction situation. So just be careful with that. And then down here we have f times g of x as being a new function. And all that means is to just take your two functions f of x and g of x and multiply them together. All right. And then the last one is dividing two functions. f divided by g of x means just take f of x, divide that by g of x, and of course g of x can't be you know, zero because then you'd, have, you'd be undefined. So really what this all boils down to is you can add, subtract, multiply, and divide functions. If you've played with uh, polynomial um, expressions prior to this, you've already done all four of these things just with polynomials and probably rationals and other things as well. You just were not calling them functions. So now we're just backing you up one step and saying, okay, so these things are called functions and here's what we can do with our functions to get new functions. Right, let's look at an example. Let's let f of x be x squared minus 3. And let g of x be the function 2x plus 5. Now we just want to find f plus g of x. Now what I recommend you do, and this is leading up into uh, another, into the next video. What I recommend you do is write out what this is defined to be. Okay, f plus g of x is defined to be f of x plus g of x. All right, and then line up your equal sign. And say, all right, what's f of x? Well, f of x is x squared minus 3. And then we have plus, and then we say, all right, what's g of x? Well, g of x is 2x plus 5. And we just add these together. And really what it's pulled down to is you just add like terms. So you have x squared plus 2x plus 2. And this is the new function down here. Right? This is equal to f plus g of x. Do not put a 0 over here on the left hand side and then go solve this with a quadratic formula or whatnot. Now this is just the new function and its name is f plus g of x. Alright? Let's try another one. Let's try f minus g. All right, so f minus g of x. Okay, I encourage you to write out what that definition is, what f minus g of x is defined to be, and that's f of x minus g of x. And then line up your equal sign and say, all right, what's f of x? Well, that's x squared minus 3. Then we have the minus sign. And then g of x is 2x plus 5. Now notice this time I'm putting parentheses in. The reason why is because this g of x is a binomial, and we want to subtract that entire binomial from the x squared minus 3 situation, and so you have to put the parentheses in in order to distribute that negative sign, the negative 1 sign through. You could have done the same thing up here. You could have had parentheses around this, and parentheses around this. And when you add them up, you still get x squared plus 2x plus 2. But with addition, uh, there's no really mistake to be made in terms of a sign error. But with subtraction, there's definitely a possibility for making a sign error. So you, um, you do need to make sure you put those parentheses around the second function that you're subtracting. So if this would have been g minus f, we would have had g of x minus f of x, and we would have had 2x plus 5 minus, and then parentheses, x squared minus 3. All right, so just be very, very careful of your... Uh, of your parentheses there. So then this goes to x squared minus 3 minus 2x minus 5 and so that goes to x squared 
minus 2x minus 8. And again, this is a new function. We've just taken two functions, f and a g, subtracted on f minus g, and made a new function. All right, its name is f minus g of x. That's what this is down here. All right, so far so good. Okay, so let's, uh, let's go down to c. Okay, f g of x. All right, so this means multiplication. So again, I encourage you to write out what it's defined to be. So f of x times g of x whoops, equals, all right, so f of x was x squared minus 3, and g of x was 2x plus 5. And this is just multiplying two polynomials together. Yeah, so you've, uh, you've done that before. So this goes to 2x cubed plus 5x squared, if you distribute that through, minus 6x minus 15. And this is your new function down here, and its name is f times g of x. You know, if you want, you can bring that down here and say f g of x, and say, all right, that's my function. We could do that with all of them because it said f minus g of x is this down here and be done and this is f plus g and so forth. All right, but it, the point is is that we we we're making new functions, so we're not solving anything. We're just making new functions. All right, one more, d. F divided by g of x. Again, write out what it's defined to be. F of x divided by g of x x squared minus 3, and g is 2x plus 5. And that's about all we're going to really worry about, um, but except for one thing. On these first three examples, this one up here, f plus g of x is equal to x squared plus 2x plus 2, the domain's all real numbers. For f minus g of x being x squared minus 2x minus 8, again, the domain is all real numbers. You can plug any number you want into for x and nothing bad happens. All right, same with multiplication. You get 2x cubed plus 5x squared minus 6x minus 15. You can plug in any real number you want for x and, uh, and nothing bad happens, so the domain's all real numbers. But down here for d, where we start dividing, that's not always the case. So we look at this thing here and we say, all right, we've got a fraction. We want to make sure we don't have zero in the denominator. So what value for x makes zero in the denominator? And all right, we throw that one out. x equals negative 5 halves. Everybody see how we got that? All right, so this is the function f divided by g. Um, provided x, we, could, we don't use x equals negative 5 halves. All right, that's it. That's the concept. So the good news about these these um, operations on functions is you've probably played with them before, uh, just not when they were called functions. That's all. So all the algebra should uh, should be okay. All right. So we've got uh, one more operation on functions that we need to discuss. Uh, it's called composition of functions. It's in the next video. Um, so uh, that one might be a new one to you. All right. So uh, study well. Please let me know if you have any questions and check out the next video.